All right, all right, all right. Hey, fam, what's up? It's Philosophy Panther. Welcome back to the Panther Spot. Can you believe I have freaking 24 episodes up already? Hey, Patrick. What? I thought of something funnier than 24. Let me hear it. 25. <laughs> That's enough! Can y'all believe this crap? Quick shout out, Trey De Leon, uh, Fromos Apparel. This, uh, they didn't pay me for it. It's just good shit. They got it from mostapparel.org.com.net. He'll post it up in on the thing. Y'all really want some? Uh, hey there, Sherry. All right. See, now my, I'm, I'm, I'm good now, right? My makeup artist, she told me to make sure to get the elbows. I don't know why, because you can't see my elbows. And uh, my producer gave me a thumbs up. So we doing good. All right. Let's chit chat a little bit. Alright, let's get the drama out of the way. First and foremost, Riri and Snapchat. I know some of y'all probably have seen it, probably don't even really understand what's going on in the depth of what's going on. Oh, I'm going great. I'm doing great, Trey. Appreciate you for asking. Alright, Riri and Snapchat. So apparently Snapchat, I don't know, a couple days ago, put a little post up or you could, you know, choose, you could do a poll. It says, would you rather slap Riri or punch Chris Brown? Mm. Now, of course, black Twitter, the whole internet lost their fucking mind, and Twitter probably dropped by four points. They actually did drop by four points. <sighs> Twitter, what have you been doing? Twitter, go home, you're drunk. All right? You've been fucking up. You know what it is? Twitter's acting like you just broke up with them, and they trying to do better without you, but they fucking up every step of the way. Like, it's look, it looks obvious. And they can't do shit without you. Because they done did a whole, not Twitter, Snapchat. But Twitter was a whole mess, it was. But, oh my God, listen. Snapchat, ever since your change. Okay, look at me, Snapchat. Look me. Look at me right here. You can look at me here. All right, Snapchat, uh, I'm going to need you to go back being the old you. Because now you're going out more and you're fucking up shit. And nobody knows you anymore. All right, it's starting to get annoying. Because what you did was uncalled for. Now, you lost some points before, and they tried to all point it to say that because Kylie Jenner didn't like you. Fuck Kylie Jenner. Fuck the Jenners. Fuck the Kardashians. I said every time I can. She had no control over you losing. Actually, you actually gained subscribers um, um, to your app when she said, hey, don't use Snapchat anymore. You're my favorite love or some bullshit. But this shit with here, with Riri, Riri got real power. Motherfuckers deleted the app. And you can go look at their, oh, fromosapparel.com. It's up here if you want to say it. Everybody hates the damn update. They should have left the shit alone. They should have. You're right. Um, but here's what happened, okay? So people got mad. You know, can you believe there's actually people who actually voted on it? Now, there are people who, you know, if you're a comedian, you can get away with certain jokes. You can get away because that's what a comedian's job is to push the envelope to see what is funny. If it sticks, it sticks. If it don't, oh, well, you go to the next joke. Comedians are the only ones in the world who can get away with that shit. Snapchat, you're not a comedian. I told you, you're a bad ex-girlfriend, and you need to go back and go back to being what you used to be. All right? Some of y'all who, if you've been living on a rock, all right, Rihanna's career went through the stratosphere when she went and told everybody that uh, um, Chris Brown beat the shit out of her in a car. It turned out not all being the truth. She uh, beat the shit out of him too, grabbed his balls, grabbed the steering wheel, hid the keys, played cat and mouse with him. All that shit that she left out of the story, you know, while he declined, and didn't really disappear because he's Chris Brown. You can't get rid of him, you know. The females love him. The hoes love him. That's what it is. But... They Snapchat thought they would take advantage of this and run with it and do like a little joke. Whoever approved that shit need to get slapped. And I'm sure they probably got fired because it's against their code of conduct. All right. Now, then Riri saw that shit and, you know, she didn't have to say shit, but she did release a little statement saying, yo, like, why would you do this? Basically, this is, you, you're spitting in the face of all people, both men and women, because, you know, in the back of her head, she knows she fucked up too, which is the reason why they said, would you hit? Chris Brown and smack Rihanna, okay? Uh, but there are people who are going through domestic violence issues right now. There's women at home right now, scared to leave the house, scared to tell their family, locked away. I got a, my, I think my, my, yes, okay, this is my home, okay. My homeboy is 
ex-girlfriend is living in a situation she tried to do better like Snapchat and did worse and got with another dude who's like six foot five bigger than myself and it ain't me and my my best friend ain't finna fight this nigga off cause uh fuck that so she get her ass beat every night she's stuck she's stuck unless she called the police but she got too much pride and she loves that nigga cause she think women for some reason think they can change guys all right, there's people out there, there's men, women, and children going through domestic violence issues, and you want to make a joke about this shit? Rihanna said, listen, uh, you got to go delete Snapchat. And don't you know? Their utilization and their how many people were watching actually use the app, they actually, it went down. The utilization went down. I mean, people were taking off. They was like, fuck it, I don't need it. I got Instagram anyway. <laughs> so, and it sucks because Instagram literally copied everything Snapchat did. So... It just sucks that way. And I think y'all should pay attention to this because it's not funny. All right. Now, there's always circumstances. There's always issues. There's always a um, an exception to the rule and stuff like that. But there, there's no reason why anybody, except for maybe comedians, should make jokes or even do anything like that internet-wise about domestic violence. Uh, Snapchat, you need to get slapped beside the fucking head. All right. Go back to bed. Wake up a new person tomorrow. Big shout out to Riri. Love you. Uh, more than Beyonce. Uh, Beehive, don't come for me, cause fuck all y'all. Uh, so the next thing, and this is close to my heart. This hurts. Okay, I was gonna bring y'all some good news today, something that I I am I enjoy, uh, and I am. So uh, gamers, if y'all play Monster Hunter, just for some get my gamers. Uh, they're releasing the Devil May Cry version. Uh, you'll be able to get all his content, his gear, if you kill the right monsters and shit. So you'll be able to get the characters from Devil May Cry and Monster Hunter. With that being said, speaking of games and stuff like that, it, it saddens me to tell y'all that Toys R Us is actually closing down. For some of y'all who don't know what the fuck Toys R Us is, you, I'm not explaining it to you because it says it's in the name of the dumbest fuck. If I have to, Toys R Us. Listen. Uh, for some of y'all, Toys R Us, for some of us, Toys R Us was the thing. It was the, I probably in my entire lifetime, I am 32 years old, been in Toys R Us 20 times. Maybe 20. Because Toys R Us was the mecca. If you did good, if you did great, you would go to Toys R Us. And people are saying, yo, Amazon was the killer and... Yes and no. The ultimate killer. Let me tell y'all what really killed. Uh, what really, really killed. What's so funny? Uh, what really killed uh, Toys R Us? It wasn't Amazon. Amazon had a hand in it. Okay, and they're just doing what they're supposed to do and in increasing their business. What killed it was the lack of imagination. Listen to me. Hold on to my words for a moment. Come and need them back. Uh. We've advanced as a people amazingly. Look at what we're doing right now. 15 years ago, this was impossible. 20 years ago, this, this is not something a regular Joe Schmo would do. We would not sit up here and just be like, oh, I'm just going to start a podcast. You couldn't do that shit. You needed a whole radio station and shit, all 24 floors. And you had to pay $1,600 every week just to do a damn podcast. You might well just did a whole um, radio show for that money. Now we have so much technology at our hands right now that it is it is immaculate. It's it's we all we do is walk around with our heads down all day. You know what I'm saying? I know some real ass families right now, real ass families, whole families that don't even talk to any motherfucking kids. I right? I know some that can't that kids don't know what imagination is because they've given their kids an iPad and a cell phone at the age of motherfucking two without the insurance because they can't afford the insurance but they can afford the phone uh and so and yeah i don't care if they get mad i don't give a fuck y'all know how y'all know who y'all are got your kid walking around at two years old uh looking at youtube videos and shit when these niggas need to be figuring out how to build these motherfucking legos and shit that's what they need some motherfucking easy bake ovens and and gi joe army toys but imagination's gone out the window since technology took over and that happens, you know, it's nothing. I'm grateful for technology. Don't get me wrong. Technology is saving my wife right now. So, but when it comes, we've progressed so far that kids can't even use their imagination no more. And that hurts because Toys R Us was like God to me. I love Toys R Us. So I'm going to pour one out for, uh, I, I don't have any alcohol. Sorry, I can't pour one out. And I won't, can't smoke one. 
Uh, shout out to Toys R Us. Y'all did y'all best. You know what I'm saying? Y'all had a giraffe for a mascot. No one else could pull that shit off. I love you guys. Sorry. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, I might walk around the Toys R Us up the road here just for one last time through the halls. And maybe I might see some shit in there I like. So, with that being said, let's talk about something else I hate. <laughs> right? Let's talk about piggybacking. What is piggybacking? You ask piggybacking is when you have, all right, uh, a group of individuals. Let's just say, for example, black people, because I'm black. You got a group of individuals that say, hey, look, we're not standing up for, we're not taking this shit anymore. We're standing up for our rights, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do that. And anybody who wants to join us in this will help you guys too, and that's what we're going to do. Boom. And then when things, if things start to, if things suck, the people who you said you would help or join the movement, they kind of disappear. They dissipate, right? But then you get the ones who, uh, <laughs> who wait till you start being successful and they piggyback onto your success. And I don't even know if it's piggybacking anymore. I think we're going to call it springboarding because when you jump on a springboard, it go down first before it come back up while you go up first before you go down. And I think that's exactly what's been going on lately with everybody else's movement except for black people. So black people, this is why I tell y'all it's important. It's more important than anything, than religion, than belief, than ideologies that you create. You come together, look, come together as black people first. Not RGB, not Hoteppers, not Hebrew Israelites, not Christians, not Jews, not this, that, fuck all that. Black people. Why? Because if you start trying to do intersectionality first, like, okay, let's go with, let's go protect the transgender black people or the gay black people. You know what? How about you be black first? Because that's what you are first. I keep telling y'all, you don't get pulled over for being transgender. You do not get pulled over and, and beat, a par, beat across your head by the police and the justice system because you're gay. They do it because you're black. And so if you come together as black people first and take care of your issues, we can follow our hearts because naturally as black people, we want to help every damn body. That's just what it is. That's everybody takes from Africa. Everybody takes from black people. That's just how we are. But if we don't take care of ourselves first, how can we help anybody else? And that's what happens. We decide to split off and women hating men, black men hating black women hating men and, 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 and then you got gay black people mad because, you know, they're mad at the bisexuals because you need to pick a side and the transgenders don't get barely any love and this all this other it just divides too quickly we can handle all that shit later uh because i can guarantee you right now whether they're gay straight bi um angry not angry whatever the latino community uh the hispanics and 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 you know the asians east indians they they women white women they join they join that stuff they bounce off that and i'm not talking about like like the regular you know joe schmo white women and stuff like i'm sure they benefit from it but i'm talking about like you know the soccer moms with the hair in front of their eye and shit the one that calls the manager uh because the price said 4.99 and they had to pay five dollars um those type of women so they springboard off your off our success and i'll give you an example black panther just came out of me one billion dollars and it's still going. A billion dollars, right? Okay, we've been waiting forever, okay, since my dad gave me a comic book back in the day that had somebody by the name of Luke Cage in it for us to have representation. And I didn't like Luke Cage at the time because that dude had a f little um, tiara on his forehead. Like, what? They tried this big strong man by giving him some, <laughs> some gauchos, a loose shirt, and a tiara. <laughs> Okay, we fast forward and they're doing good, right? And that's cool. That's good. But wait, why do we wait till we get uh, a million, a billion dollars for then Latino people be like, well, uh, why can't we have a, a Hispanic? You do. You do have Hispanic um, superheroes. As a matter of fact, um, Asians have them too. This, that, and the third. But see, why don't you, why did you start this mess before we did our petitioning, our fighting, our arguing. Don't piggyback off our train. Get your own train. Matter of fact, make your own railroad. That's not an Asian joke. Make your own railroad. Get the train and move yourself. Because since since the days of, um, since the civil rights, that's all we've been doing. 
okay? And every time we turn around, we find an issue. As black people, we help ourselves first, right? That's what we were doing. And then we'd be like, all right, well, you know what? These, you know, women are, you know, oppressed too. And, 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 the, and the, 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 the Asians and the, the East Indians and the Hispanics. And we would do all that. When we needed help, nobody comes to our help, to our rescue. Nobody. I'll give you an example of nobody come to your rescue. Remember the little black girl years ago? I hate the story. I keep bringing it up. A little black girl was at a pool party, okay, and the, and the cop showed up. Cop showed up and, yeah, Hispanics have 20, 25. No, wait, wait, wait. You talking about Miles Morales? He's black and Hispanic. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. But <laughs> there was a little black girl at a pool party, and the pool party was being dispersed, and the cop showed up and saw this one lone, this black girl with her brothers or whoever they were, and decided to put her face down, tooth into the concrete, face first into the concrete with his heavy 225, 265 pound body in the middle of her back, okay? And the other brothers, the only ones trying to fight for her was, I guess, her relatives or whatever. But then you, you, you heard no outrage from the, the feminist movement. None. Zero outrage. It should have been outrage. What? But this is a black girl. What about the girl who, uh, what about Sandra Bland? No outrage. From the feminist movement. What about the woman who lost her baby on the side of the road by a police officer punching her over and over and over? No outrage. But they appeal to y'all, sisters. Listen to me when I say that. They appeal to y'all with the bullshit. Hey, we should come together. We should have came together and helped that little girl. When it comes to uh, Miles and 1610, okay, I stand corrected. When it comes to uh, black women, and I'll even still go so as far as Hispanic women. When it comes to that in the fem women, feminist movement, you guys are nothing more than cannon fodder. You're pawns on a big board of chess. You're the pawns. You're the ones that get taken with one swipe. You're just there to make the defense and make the movement look bigger than it really is. And I know there's a lot of black women who hate me for saying this, but it's the reality. Because I haven't seen one cent, one iota, not one time, did the whole brand of the feminist movement come for any black women and help them and back them unless it was especially not against the police maybe that's just what I'm seeing when it goes against the police they back away because they know that their movement is being funded by the same guy with some funds the police too and Black Lives Matter but it's a whole nother story I, I'll reiterate Black Lives Matter again because that was like from episode 3 anyway so I say all this to say this piggybacking sucks I need y'all to get your own motherfucking lane and driving that shit and then we may help y'all but if y'all don't show up when we need your help then the fuck Speaking of piggybacking and something that changes that, this lets you know that black people are open to helping everybody else. One thing y'all didn't know about was the White Panther Party. Did y'all know about the White Panther Party? The White Panther Party, okay, uh, was consisted of white people who supported fully, okay, fully the Black Panther Party. They Everything that the Black Panther Party stood for, they were just white. They were just white people that stood by it. Okay, all right. And the leaders of the Black Panther Party knew this. Huey P knew this. Huey P would meet up with these people because he knew they were legit. Okay, he didn't Malcolm X them when you know, when a white girl comes up to him says, "How can I be supportive? Stay out of my way. We don't need your help." That that he didn't do that. What he did was he spoke about the inequalities for black people first. He helped his people first. And then if there were white people, Hispanics, anybody else out there that say, hey, look, we're oppressed too. We would love to join and help. How can we do it? He said, all right, build your own chapter, okay, and we'll collaborate. And that's exactly what the White Panther Party did. And they joined and they showed a, a common, there was a flag that they commonly had that they that you would see in the background. And people misplaced this and think this was the gay flag, but it was not. The rainbow flag was something that was agreed upon amongst the White Panther Party, Black Panther Party, the Brown Berets, all of these uh, overly oppressed people and their own groups. When they came together, this, this rainbow flag meant all the colors of the rainbow, not just the rainbow, but the colors of the people, okay? This was something to express that, hey, this rainbow coalition, uh, not to be um, confused with the one that we have now today that's pretty much worthless, uh, it was to show diversity and togetherness all in one flag. Gay people saw it and hey, Huey P supported gay people too. But he said before you are gay, you are whatever is your, your skin color because that mattered. And somewhere along the line, along the line piggybacking happened. 
You know what I'm saying? Gay people started making some more money. They started getting into uh, politics. They started having, you know, high-end people in the right places. And next thing you know, that rainbow flag stopped meaning black, white, Hispanic, blah, 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 love. And meant, oh, gay love. And so then now you see the theft of the rainbow flag. Piggybacking and theft. And that's some fuck shit. I want to give a shout out again to uh, Fromos Apparel. Thanks for stopping by and leaving your information. Uh, it's really good shit there. Um, um, real quick, uh, I want to thank everybody who's been um, like standing by us, hitting us up, you know, letting us show in, encouraging us, uh, you know, allowing me to see another day, push through the next day. Everything that uh, we've been going through with my wife and her stroke back in December 16th, it is literally seven days away. Uh, until wait 15, 15 10. yeah seven days away until i bring my wife home um and i'm uber excited uh we still have a long 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 road ahead of us before um anything you know she she gets back to being 100 percent charity but i want to thank everybody who's been just hitting me up everybody who uh, encouraged me to start that GoFundMe. Everybody who hit me up for the GoFundMe, as a matter of fact, you can find that uh, that little, you know you'll, it'll, it'll it should twinkle at the bottom bottom down here because my producer does shit like that. But the GoFundMe is uh, GoFundMe.com forward slash uh, Hev's Helpers. If you still want to donate, I appreciate it. Every dollar helps. It really really does. Um, helps us go back and forth with the, with the flying and now trying to get everything that she needs here in the house. Um, until she can walk on her own, which we're really going to push. Um, I can't wait till she's back to being a first person asshole. Uh, <laughs> that's what my cousin just said. Fuck you. That's my asshole. And I love her. Um, so yes, you can hit up that and everything like that. But, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, make sure before you go, you know what I'm saying? Check us out on, uh, you can find us on iTunes, we're on Stitcher. Um, if you ain't got none of that stuff and you don't do iPhones and stuff, um, you can hit me up on SoundCloud.com forward slash, um, I start to say Hell's Happen. <laughs> forward slash The Panther Spot. Um, and if you want to support the show, please do so. Independent media and independent shows need help, need your help. Please become part of Panther Nation. Go to patreon.com forward slash the Panther Spot. Become a patron. It's only a dollar to start. And if you want other cool stuff like behind the scenes and merch that's on this way and coming, please, please, please donate. Um, it's a monthly thing, but it's like I said, it's just a dollar to get the behind the scenes content. And uh, what I'm going to do as of right now, um, let me find my, because he, I should have known, I should have did this shit earlier. I'm actually going to um, give y'all the number to call. I'm actually, I want y'all to text. Matter of fact, don't even worry about that. Y'all hit me up on Patreon first. And uh, we'll just say for the next 10 people that joined Panther Nation, I'm going to give away some of this cool uh, uh, body butter I came up with. It's called New Rain. Uh, it's for men, it's men scented stuff, but ladies, I know y'all men want to, you want your men to smell good. So with that being said, I love all you guys, black folks, you know my little thing. Between me and you, I need you to understand, uh, if you can't do it every day, do it, if you can't do it every day, do it once a week. Do it once a week, can't do it once a week, do it once a month. If you can't do it once a month, try, try doing it as much as you can in a year. Always think, act, by black, I love you guys, y'all have a good night, I'm out. Bitch, sit down. Nobody with me. You may not dance with me.